So recently, I've come to the conclusion that I want to become a minimalist. So in 2019, I volunteered in Nepal and then shortly after I went to India to an ashram and I literally took with me my backpack and my camera bag and this was liberating. Being away for two months with literally only my necessities, it really left an effect on me. And whilst I was in the ashram, um, I learned basically about Vendetta philosophy and like the lifestyle of yoga. And it's something that's like absolutely fascinating, whether or not you specifically believe it or not, you can take a lot from it and learn a lot from it. Whilst I was in the ashram, um, I read a book called the Bhagavad Gita, which is, it's not necessary. I don't necessarily believe everything in it and I don't relate to everything in it, but it was so interesting to read in general. Um, and I can take things from it and apply it to my own beliefs. and basically come to my own philosophical conclusion. You know, after spending time in the ashram where, you know, we'd get up at 5 a.m. in the morning to do yoga and meditation, we ate a strict vegan diet, we did like candlelit meditation and that kind of thing. I really did let go um, of this concept of materialism. And for a while, I really, really didn't understand why you'd want to buy brands. I didn't, I couldn't understand, I couldn't comprehend why you'd want to buy a like, designer and brands to impress people that, I, that you don't care about. I could understand why you'd buy something if it was a better quality, but I couldn't understand why you'd buy something that was branded, that was the same quality as something that wasn't branded, just for the name. And for a while, I really did detach from this. So, like, I didn't buy anything branded. I just thought to myself, like, oh, you just need like the basics, like the necessities, and you'll be fine. If you save money by not spending things on material, materialistic things, you can save that money and spend it on things that are going to help you. Um, and be like long-term things. So for me, that was like camera gear, for example. But when I moved to London in 2019 to start university, things changed and basically I found myself like slowly being pulled back into that toxic culture of buying things to impress people that you don't like. And it's just mad to get your head around. And slowly I found myself being pulled back into that, especially it's hard when you're surrounded by, by people that are in that mindset as well. So it's just very normal. But yeah, I've just noticed that I'm being pull back into it and you know like I have this impulse in my head it's like oh buy this because it's a really cool brand for example but you have to ask yourself why do you actually want this if it was unbranded would you want it and um, it's important to try to come to terms with what your ego is trying to tell you and what it's trying to prove so basically what I've done to try and tackle this is I notice when it's happening and it's happened a couple of times in the last few years and when it happens I specifically make an effort to try and uncondition my mind because it's like a deep rooted problem like within our society. The more times that you watch these kind of things on YouTube and Netflix and read about it, you kind of realize the conditioning that's actually happened to you. So yeah, it basically brings me to one conclusion and that is minimalism. So whilst we're on the topic of minimalism, I just wanted to cut in quickly and talk about today's sponsor, which is the Ridge Wallet. So my favorite thing about the Ridge Wallet is the RFID blocking technology, which basically protects you from digital pickpocketers. And this is really useful for me as I live in a really busy city and I'm always out and about paying for coffee or getting on the tube. And there's people about that can steal your money through contactless payments. So the technology that this has is super useful. So for someone who's vegan, I opted for the carbon fiber wallet. And the fact that the Ridge offer a sustainable solution for their wallet is a really cool thing for me as it's hard to find. So not only is it light, but it's also ethical. So if you compare the two wallets here, this is my old wallet, which is so bulky. The size difference in general is just so much smaller. It's literally the size of a card. So as you can imagine, taking this around the city is so much more portable and safer. This is literally the future. If you compare it to old style of wallets, it's so bulky and it's just an easy target for people that are trying to pickpocket you. And I've been discussing about materialistic culture, but a wallet like this is not a materialistic buy because the wallet actually holds up to 12 cards as well as money in the cash trap behind. And because of the sustainable materials that it's made from, it's something that's gonna last you a long time, but actually 
holds its quality well. So you can use my unique link, which is ridge.com slash Lucy Galliford or my unique code, which is Lucy Galliford. I'll put that in the description and that will get you 15% off. So I've looked at the definition of minimalism and it, it actually says on Google, the, like the most relevant definition of it is a deliberate lack of decoration or adornment in style or design. So I dug a bit deeper and one of the other definitions in terms of a minimalist lifestyle is striving to only use things that serve a purpose. And that's basically what I'm referencing when I talk about minimalism. Basically only having things that you need, not things that you want. And life is just so much easier without it, for me anyway. Basically it's the concept that the more things that we acquire and the more things that we have, the more problems that we have, the more weight that we carry and the more emotional baggage that we have. So I've started to make changes. So a little example of this is I bought Yeezys um, a couple of years back and basically I bought a pair with the intention to resell them and they came and I formed this materialistic attachment to this object that has no value and I didn't sell them. Basically, I bought another pair because I was then going to sell those to make the money back. And yeah, I kept them too because I formed this like materialistic attachment to them and I, I thought that, you know, I thought they were cool and I thought that it was cool to have them. But I think it's definitely growth being able to admit that because a couple of years ago, if you'd asked me, like, why do you have these? I'd be like, oh, I think, I think they're like a cool design and stuff. But it's definitely because I thought that people would think I was cool because I was wearing them. But yeah, I can actually admit that now. Um, I also read in the book this quote, which is, I can't remember where I, where I saw it, but um, it basically is this concept that everything is borrowed and we own nothing. And it's this idea that everything you have is borrowed and it's just from one person to another. You never actually own anything. Like you think that you own a car because you bought it, but you don't own that car. Like it doesn't come to the grave with you, it doesn't die with you. And this illusion that we own things causes misery because basically what happens is you attach yourself to something that you think you own. So therefore when it's taken away from you, it causes pain because so I was buying a car, right? And I buy it and I think it defines me. I think it's mine. That car brings me happiness, but that car can be taken away. It doesn't come to the grave of me. So therefore that happiness is being taken away. The only thing that you truly own is literally your thoughts, your free will, your, your mind, your passions, yourself essentially. And any idea that you own anything else is just gonna cause you pain in the long run. But it's a really interesting concept and I would advise you to go and look it up because it's fascinating when you when you come to terms with this concept that you don't own anything like nothing is yours it's all borrowed and eventually it will be some like someone else will borrow it from you i don't know it allows you to start letting go of of this attachment to these objects that you think are yours and kind of realize what is truly valuable in life and it's the same concept as when we have this void within us this like pit of unhappiness that we haven't acknowledged yet when we don't acknowledge the pain that we've gone through, whether that's from like trauma in the past, um, experiences that we've had, relationships, whatever that is, when we don't address it and deal with it and process it and get to the root of the problem, we tend to use people, we tend to go to relationships to fill that void. So we'll find a partner and we'll use that person to kind of like fix us essentially, right? And it's the same thing when this relationship ultimately ends because there is this natural temporary nature of everything. Everything is temporary and like nothing lasts forever, right? So it's natural for things to go in cycles and to end and restart. And it's therefore natural for relationships to end. And this is quite a controversial topic, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Um, of course, there are exceptions, but yeah, basically what I'm saying is when relationships do end, people are then stuck with this massive like like depression like essentially that it was like hole within them because they never truly addressed the issues that were there in the first place they filled that with someone else and that person then gone so they're left with the same issues and ultimately when people don't address these issues they're never content on their own so they're always going to depend on other people to help them personally one of the main kind of areas that i i strive towards in my life um, to getting figured out is being able to be independent and being able to be content on my own, which I talk about a lot on my channel anyway, because I don't know, I feel like when you master independence and being content in your own space, then you open yourself up to other opportunities with other people because you're not relying on them. You're kind of just like collaborating and I don't know, combining together. Does that make sense? So basically what I started to do is I started to sell everything that I don't need. So I ultimately like, 
for me anyway i get stressed out when there's so many things like if you can see my bedroom right now it is crazy um but i literally just want to have like my bedroom my editing area and my camera gear um like the necessities because it allows me like less clutter around me is less cluster in my mind and it basically means that I can be more productive because there is less things to like have to control if that makes sense and yeah I'm basically coming to terms with the fact that a lot of the things I own my ego pushed me to buy because I thought that the recognition from others would validate me and you know make me feel good about myself like yeah I've got a um, a, a piece of clothing that's really expensive and other people recognize this and, and that makes you feel validated but it's just an endless cycle it's a trap and it's really just like an element of the ego that I really just want to detach from it doesn't make you happy in the long run and there's no end like it just keeps on going but of course don't get me wrong this is a massive process and it does not happen overnight I mean like I said I went to an ashram in India like in 2019 I had this massive like mindset shift because I was so far from like Western culture and like city life. But then when I came back, I just got sucked back into it. So it's so difficult to avoid, especially when you're living in London. I feel like it's it's a really hard thing to avoid. Um, and perhaps when you move out of London or you live somewhere that's less kind of pretentious, um, it might be easier. But of course, it's a really long process to go through and like baby steps is better than nothing. But I think even just being aware of it is the first step. Like self-awareness is incredibly helpful and being aware that perhaps you're buying things because your ego is telling you to is the first step. Because a lot of people can't even admit to themselves or actually comprehend that they're buying things because their ego wants them to buy it to validate themselves. They're, they're buying it because they, they genuinely think it's gonna make them happy. Um, but yeah, it's, that's a story for another day. It's a long one. Thank you so much to The Ridge for sponsoring this video. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out my Instagram as I post a lot more content on there as well. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.